Welcome to Tabletop Ready, my name's Michael and in this tutorial I'm going to show you step by step how you can paint the Squiggog boys so they look like the ones you see on the box. I'll list the brushes and paints I use in the description below. If you enjoy my content make sure to like the video and let me know in the comments which I'll be sure to reply to. It shows YouTube you enjoy it and it goes a long way to growing the channel which I would really appreciate. You can follow me on Instagram where I also put tutorials and you can keep up to date with my own hobby and if you want to share with me what you're working on you can show me on the r slash tabletop ready subreddit. When I was building the Squig Hog boys I decided to keep the Snagger boys and Gretchen separate to make them easier to paint. And now that I have them all built I can show you how to paint them. For the Squig Hogs, boys and Gretchen I recommend using Wraith Bone Spray to undercoat them all. This is going to help get those bright vibrant colours I'm after. Some of the squig hogs have open mouths which means we're going to have to paint some gums and tongues. I'm going to paint these first because I can be messy and not worry about ruining any other areas we may have already painted. For the tongues start with some Cantor blue and for the gums use Bugman's glow. Now wash both of these details with some Drukey violet and let that dry. Next layer up the tongue with some Outdorf guard blue and the gums with some Demonet hide. To highlight these details you can use Calgar blue for the tongue and your Shabti bone for the gums. And because these are organic details I want to finish by applying some contrast Magos purple to soften the colours to both these areas. I want to paint the teeth next before working on the skin. Start by painting any teeth using more gas bone. Using the Shabti bone you now want to paint some chunky highlights emphasising the shape of the teeth and then finish the teeth by painting an edge highlight using Screaming Skull. Now the mouth and teeth are done, we can concentrate on painting the squig hogs. To paint the skin, I'm going to begin by blocking in some colours. And I want to start with painting the lighter underbelly using more gas bone, because this is going to be easier to paint on the wraith bone undercoat, and I know I'm going to be messy trying to get into some of the hard to reach areas of the body. I'm now going to paint the skin of the squig hog using Evil Sun Scarlet. Whenever you're painting it's better to thin your paints first and I find an equal amount of water does the trick. You also want to try and avoid going over areas you've already painted because you can create unwanted texture with your brush while the paint is drying. And painting multiple thin layers is better so you don't lose any of the detail on your miniatures. So make sure to let a layer dry before repeating the process and you'll have a nice solid colour to work with. The last colour I'm going to use before moving on to the next step is going to be Bugman's Glow on the lower lip. With these colours blocked in I'm now going to create some definition. Create a wash using Caraberg Crimson and an equal amount of Lamy Medium. This is going to weaken the strength of the wash so it doesn't dull down any colours we've already painted. You want to use this wash only on the skin and lower lip making sure to not get any on the underbelly we painted with more gas bone. Try not to overdo this step, just use enough to cover these areas comfortably and if you find it pulling up too much in areas, just use your brush and soak up any excess wash you don't want. Once the wash is dried, we can now layer the skin back up using Evil Sun Scarlet. You want to paint the Evil Sun Scarlet on all the raised areas and details, leaving the darker colour in the shallower detail and folds of the skin. Now do the same thing using Squig Orange but only painting around the eyes, nose and upper lip this time. Once you've finished doing that we can finish the skin. First by using Caraberg Crimson directly in the deeper fold to the skin to create more definition. We're now ready to highlight the Squig Hog skin. When it comes to highlighting you want as much control over the brush and paint as possible. First of all it helps to have a brush you can get a good tip. I tend to keep one separate just for highlighting. I also like to remove some paint onto some kitchen paper so the brush isn't overloaded which can cause thick blobby lines. Take your time painting thin lines on the raised areas and any of the details you want to bring out on the miniature. I use Jericho Orange on the main body and Screaming Skull on the details of painted Squig Orange. There are still a few things we need to get done on the body of the Squig Hog before we can move on. So let's get to it. 
I'm now going to show you how to finish up some of the details that still need to be painted starting with the lower lip. Start by layering up with some Bubman's Glow and then continue doing this using some Cadian Flesh Tone building up the colour and then paint some highlights using Kids Left Flesh. To finish painting the underbelly you may need to start by neatening up the more gas bone you already started with and then we want to think about softening the transition between the two colours. Create a glaze using some squig orange with Lamy Medium. A glaze is just a really thin down paint making it translucent so you can still see any colour underneath coming through. You want to use a squig orange glaze by overlapping it slightly over the two colours we're trying to blend together. Just build the colour up slowly rather than using it like a wash. Once you're happy with that, use some Screaming Skull and layer up the raised areas of the belly to finish. You'll notice that the legs of the squig hogs are a darker red than the body. To do this on your squig hog, you can use some contrast pink to make the legs darker. And then some Karenberg Crimson once the contrast is dry to take away that gloss and darken the legs some more. You could call the skin finished here, but I want to show you how to paint some stripy markings along the back of the squig hog. Start with some corn red to paint the stripes. I use reference images for this, and remember they don't need to be perfect. Just neaten up the design with some Evelson Scarlet if you need to. And once you've done that, use some Abaddon Black within the patterns you created, leaving a border of the corn red. Let's not forget about the hooves and eyes. Start with Abaddon Black on the hooves. Now paint some chunky lines using Dark Reaper. And then do some fine highlights with Femrys in grey. For the eyes I use Avalon Sunset and then paint a line of Abaddon Black in the centre. The next steps are going to involve painting the Squig Hogs, Snagger Boys and Gretchen all together. Let's work on these materials now by blocking in all the colours we want to use for these details. Go around the Squig Hogs, Orcs and Gretchen, painting any straps, wraps, clothing and the saddles. You can choose whatever colours you want to and I would even mix up the colours on the clothing to add more interest. And make sure to paint any furs and scales at this stage that the Snagger Boys have on their back. After that's been done, move on to painting all the metallics and metals on the miniatures. I'm using a mix of Iron Hand Steel, Balthazar Gold and Screaming Bell. While you're painting all these details, you do want to try and be as neat as you can. Don't worry if you're not though. Just go around the miniatures neating up any areas you may have been messy. We've painted all these details together so we can now apply wash on them at the same time. Just like before with the wash we made for the squig hog skin, thin down some Agraxa shade with an equal amount of Lamy medium. Then use this wash only on the areas we just painted, making sure not to get any on the finished squig hog body and let this dry. We can now spend some time highlighting the details we painted before moving on to painting the Orc and Gretchen skin. To make things easier for ourselves I'm going to mainly use the same colours to highlight most of the details on the miniature. For the saddle and boots that are painted black I'll use Dawnstone. Then highlight the scaled hide with Wild Rider Red. And all I'll do for any bandages and wraps around feet and weapons I'll just lay it back up using your Shabti Bone. To finish highlighting, I use Domho Silver on all the metallic details on the miniatures. Now we can move on to painting the skin on the Orcs and Gretchen. When I'm painting Orc skin, I always like to get the tongue and teeth done first. Paint the tongue with Cadian Flesh Tone and then apply some Drooky Violet. For the teeth, use Yushabdi Bone to start, then apply some Contrast Skeleton Horde and then finish with a highlight using Screaming Skull. For the actual skin, I'm going to use my Orc Skin Mix I made in a previous tutorial and this was made using two parts Death Guard Green and one part Flash Kitsch Yellow. Use this to paint a solid base colour for the skin, remembering multiple layers are better to get the solid colour we're after. To start creating some definition, make a wash using Beltan Green and thinning this down with an equal amount of Lamy Medium and then use this wash all over the skin and let this dry. Now use Beltan Green as it is to define the muscles and features some more by directly applying it to where you want it. Using the Orc Skin Mix again, we're going to neaten up any messy areas and layer up the raised areas. We can now finish the skin using Creed Khaki to highlight. 
I'm going to make the skin a bit more interesting now by using a glaze of Cadian Flesh Tone on lower lips, ears and the Gretchen noses. Finish the Orcs and Gretchen by painting the eyes and lenses using Mephiston Red and finish any lenses with Wild Rider Red and then a small dot of white scar in the top corner of the lens. I now want to show you how to finish up and paint the different colours of the armour. You can paint the armour of the Beast Snaggers and the clan colours of your choice, but they do have their own distinct colours. Start by painting any details you want the light colour using Pallid Witch Flesh. Once that's done, I made a thin glaze with Carrick Stone and Lamy Medium and applied this over the Pallid Witch Flesh. Now highlight these panels with some white scar. To create the chips of the edges of the armour, use some dry bark. I just use the side of my brush and I try to be as random with it as I can. To paint the red glyphs and details, I start with corn red. I then wash the red with Norn Oil. Paint a thick highlight first with Mephiston Red and then finish with an edge highlight using Cadian Flesh Tone. If you want to paint some parts of the armour yellow, start with some Muriel Yellow. Then wash this using Cassandora Yellow and finish with an edge highlight using Phalanx Yellow. The Squidhog boys are now finished and I hope I've been able to show you how you can achieve the same look as the ones you see on the box. I do have plenty of other Orc tutorials on my channel if you need more help getting your Orcs painted. Thank you for watching and I hope you found my tutorial useful. If you did make sure to leave a like and let me know in the comments below. Thank you for all the support, I really appreciate it and I'll see you in the next video.